today I'm going to be replacing the timing belt and water pump and the tensioner and pulley today. I used these pliers and I pulled out the valves. The valve is right there. I took it completely out so it will drain up quicker. Uh, you can just keep that and make sure you have that drain into a nice drain container to help it flow. You can take this off. There we go. And uh, we're gonna take the fan off here in order to get more room. And then we're gonna take the belt off and we're gonna undo this clamp to get the hose out of the way. And uh, then we'll start undoing the front cover here. I'm gonna tuck that up out of the way here. All right, now we can undo the belt. So we're gonna put a, a 3 8 ratchet in there and we're gonna turn the tensioner and then we'll be able to pull the belt off. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. All right, now we're gonna get this tensioner off. I believe it's a 15 millimeter bolt. This is blocking one of the bolts on the front cover we need to get, so we're gonna take this off. For increased room, you can take the 10 millimeter bolt out of here and pull that hose, and you can just lift this box out of the way. You can also undo this and unplug the connector and just lift it out of the way completely. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this 15 millimeter out, and then I'm gonna take the 10 millimeter there, and the 10 millimeter there and unplug this connector and then we're gonna lift the fans up out of the way. Okay, I undid the 10 millimeters and undid that connector there so you can lean it forward and then lift up and you gotta work it around these hoses and then work it around that hose. So I'm probably gonna need to use two hands. All right, I lifted the fan up out of the way and uh, now we have better access to this. I'm gonna get that tensioner off. Okay, the tensioner looks okay. Now that that's out, we can get to these bolts. We're going to want to get all the bolts on the front cover here. There's a 10 millimeter there that we want to get to. That stays there. It's spinning good. It this have a little bit of play, but it's okay to run for now. It's a good time to check your pulleys and stuff. When... So I'm going to start with the 10 millimeter bolts around the outer edge of this. As you can see, this is broken, but there will be two bolts there. And uh, once we get the outer perimeter, we're going to get the three 10 millimeter bolts holding the power steering pump on here and we'll be able to get the socket through the holes and you can spin that and then once we set this aside then we're going to get the larger the larger bolts here and uh yeah then we're gonna try to lift it off okay i got the power steering bolts out here so we're just gonna sit that to the side right there and we're gonna take this 10 mil out and we don't need to get the one down there but there's just gonna be a 10 mil at the bottom here i already got the bottom ones out and yeah and we're gonna get these two we got 13 millimeter action going on here and it's a 15 millimeter from behind where the tensioner was all right, I just pulled that bolt out there. We're gonna set this aside. All right, and this is what we got going on under there. If you see all that build up there in the discoloration, that is coolant. It's dried up coolant residue and other build up. And uh, it's definitely time to change that water pump. 
as you can see, it made quite a mess, so. The water pump was definitely leaking coolant. As you can see, the pink residue and build up. The next step is going to be probably the hardest. Uh, we need to remove that crankshaft pulley. You need a special puller for it. So, all right, I'm using an 18 millimeter socket here to get the bolt out. This is a Chrysler pulley puller kit. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna undo these and I'm gonna put the arms in place and then I'm gonna pop this on. And okay, I have the puller installed in place and I'm just gonna pump this and it's gonna pull the pulley off. All right, now that the pulley's out of the way, I'm gonna continue on doing the 10 millimeter bolts around there. And uh, there was a 15 millimeter nut there. Right at the bottom of the bottom plate, there's a T30, I already loosened it. Just gonna finish taking it out and then we're gonna remove the plate. As you can see, it's nice and dirty in there. Build up is from coolant leaking. I put the crank bolt back in so I can spin the engine. I want both of these timing marks to line up right with the line above it. You should only spin the engine clockwise, so I'm not going to go back. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, crank the whole engine over nearly two times. And uh, then these should line right up with the lines here on each side. All right, so as you can see, the timing marks are lined up. If you look at it like this, and I just need to get some of that crust over there and we'll be able to see it better. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a, a paint marker and mark the edge. I'm gonna mark the edge of the belt here. And then I'm gonna mark a spot right next to the line. So when we take the belt off, we can compare the belts and we can just transfer that mark. And then when we put the belt back in, we'll know it's in the exact same spot. So we don't need to worry. And then we'll spin the engine around and just verify that it's timed properly. And then we'll start rebuilding. I'm going to remove the tensioner down here. There's two bolts underneath it. I believe there are 13, just from feeling it. And uh, once we get the tensioner out, then we're gonna take this idler pulley off and we're gonna remove the belt. Then we'll start getting this water pump off. Okay, I got the bolts out of the tensioner here. So you're just gonna pull it out of the bottom. There's the old tensioner. Throw that in the garbage. Now that the tensioner is out, this is all gonna be loose. I already marked the belt as you can see. So let's just take the belt off pulley there had a 15 millimeter bolt in it and I just pulled the belt out and uh, yeah now I'm gonna undo all the 10 millimeter bolts here that go around the water pump and once you undo all those you can pull the water pump back and then I'm gonna do an extensive cleaning of inside there especially the gasket surfaces there and then I'm gonna try to get all the pink I already took a screwdriver and pried out the big chunks so I'm gonna get this all cleaned up get that water pump out and once it's all cleaned up we'll start putting it back together okay I took those bolts out you want to keep them in order how you took them out because there's two different sizes and once you get the bolts out you should be able to get it out it's a bit stuck so I'm gonna pry it out a little bit as you can see it's starting to leak As you can see, there's definitely a leak there. All right, so this all needs to get cleaned up really good. All of it, it's really messy. Just gotta clean this out a little bit more, but I got most of the garbage out. 
as you can see, that's the timing mark there, and the arrow is there. So I do think that this timing belt skipped a tooth, and that's why it was throwing timing codes. And, uh, yeah, when we put the belt back on, we're just going to want to make sure that arrow lines up with that arrow. So that's what I'm going to do. And over here, we want to make sure that these line up. And uh, we're going to put the belt on the exact same spot. And just going to clean it up a little more. And we're going to start putting this water pump back in. Okay, that's all tightened in. And now I'm just gonna spin the engine over and we're gonna see if it's not. All right, I got everything back in place. The tensioner's out. I turned it around and checked the timing. It looks good. Um, now, if you're unsure about the timing, you can connect your coolant hose and try to start it up. Should run for a little bit at least, and you'll be able to see if it's running properly or not. So I can show you that if you want. I'll connect this hose here, and then we'll try to start it up. Next, I'm gonna put the bottom plate on there. I already descaled it and then I sprayed a, a rust protectant on it to uh, stop it from rusting or at least slow down the process. So I'm gonna lift that into place. Then I'm gonna put the 15 millimeter nut on there and put the other 10 millimeter bolts in. And uh, then we're gonna put the crankshaft pulley back on. In order to reinstall the pulley here, I got a slightly longer bolt with the same thread. Uh, this way we'll be able to get the pulley pushed in, start it, and then once we get it pushed in enough, then we'll be able to use this and put it in. Got the crankshaft pulley on there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna put the front top cover here. All right, I have the front cover bolted back on. 
I also put the power steering pump back up in place and put the tensioner in there. Now we're gonna put the belt on it. As I loosen the tensioner, I'm just gonna lift the belt over here. You wanna make sure you close the valve on the radiator. I'm gonna get this guy. Got the fans in and bolted in place, plugged in. Got the coolant hose clamped up there and we got the air box back in place and tightened. I'm gonna start filling up the coolant and then we're gonna start it up and bleed the air out of the coolant system. As you're pouring the coolant in, you can loosen this nipple there and you can tighten it up after you see coolant start to flow out of there. So I ran the car for a while, got it up to temperature. The radiator fans kicked on and uh, the coolant's at a good level, so everything's looking good. I took it for a little test drive and it's running better than ever. Of course, before I switched the belt, it did skip a tooth because of all the coolant buildup. It had a code on there, something to do with the camshaft and crankshaft correlation. But uh, it's running good now and uh, hopefully this video helps you guys figure out how to replace the timing belt.